This but, item is to adopt a resolution endorsing the declaration of a climate emergency and requesting regional collaboration on a, an immediate transition and emergency mobilization effort to restore safe climates. And I show 13 speakers. 13 speakers. Excellent. Glad to hear that. Uh, Councilmember Kaplan, would you like to uh, start us off, and then we'll we'll go to the speakers. Yes, uh, thank you so much. I I will give a not too lengthy report uh, because I know many of the speakers are also going to go into the details. But what we have before us today is a resolution endorsing the declaration of climate emergency and requesting regional collaboration on an immediate just transition to restore a safe climate. And the resolution before us, I did want to mention, has also been adopted in multiple other cities. And so I am urging here today that Oakland join in this large and growing coalition that is fighting to ensure really the survival of human life on Earth, you know, if, if we may be blunt about it. The, the survival of our species is not for sure at this point. The level of emissions far exceed the levels that they need to be reduced to to ensure a habitable climate. And the cockroaches will survive, um, but we might not. And we are very blessed to live here in the Bay Area, one of the few climates that if it gets a few degrees hotter or a few degrees colder will still be survivable. But we are facing pollution, we're facing sea level rise, we're facing water contamination, we're facing air pollution as well as cancer causing emissions and other things that harm our community as well as harm the climate more broadly. And so given the magnitude of the fires, the floods, the droughts, and the other impacts that we're seeing, it is essential that we and really everyone take more action than has been taken. And so I'm pleased to bring this forward in partnership uh, with Councilmember Dan Call, Mayor Schaff, City Attorney Barbara Parker, and a broad grassroots community coalition uh, who's been working on this for us to seek much stronger action to remedy the magnitude of the climate crisis that we face. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I, I'll, uh, we're going to call the public speakers in a moment. I'll just, I'll just add that uh, as most people probably in the room already know, that the city has just begun a, what probably be a year and a half process uh, to create a not just slightly revised, but a really a major overhaul, a much more robust energy and climate action plan for the city of Oakland. Uh, and in fact, just a reminder my, my colleagues, today I believe is the due date for all of us on the city council to recommend up to three people uh, to the mayor's office uh, for appointment to, a possible appointment to the energy and energy climate action plan community advisory committee, which uh, is created uh, on a resolution that I uh, authored. Uh, so get your re recommendations in today to the to the mayor if you haven't already uh, to all all the council members and uh, looking forward to uh, that uh, lengthy process in depth process for a new climate action plan for our city. Uh, I know our staff are, are true believers in the importance of this and uh, and the community will be actively engaged in this process. However, during this year and a half process to the point of this particular resolution, if there's something that comes up, a, a new policy, a new mechanism, a, a, new, uh, a, a new thing for the city, the city to do that is, can be done quickly and is urgent, no need to wait two years before this new climate action plan is adopted. So during this process, a few of those ide new ideas may come up and say, hey, let's do this run right away. So that's something that we'll have to keep, keep tabs on. So let's call the speakers, Madam Clerk. Please approach the podium in any order as I call your name and state your name for the record. I have Michael Eisenher, Jack Fleek, Barbara Stebbins, Janice Kirsch, Armando Daniels, I believe, Alberto Kaufner, Richard Rollins, Michelle Brown, Colin Cook Miller, Thomas Smith. Benjamin Gutierrez and Nicole Lee Harris in any order if you're ceding your time to someone please just state your name. Welcome. Good morning Chair Kalb and council members. It's good to be here with you today. Um, I wanted to let you know that uh, three additional organizations and coalitions of organizations have signed on to the letter that's before you. The Berkeley Climate Action Coalition, uh, the Asian Pacific Environmental Network, and Movement Generation Justice and Ecology Program. They got there sign-ons in after the deadline. Last week's UN report makes it clear that climate change is an existential threat to the survival of humanity. 
our window for climate action to hold warming at 1.5 degrees Celsius is short, 12 years at the most. As the chair of the IPCC said, limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees would require rapid, far-reaching, and unprecedented changes in all aspects of society. The report laid out the difference between 1.5 and 2 degrees of warming, the projected deaths of approximately 420 million people globally from drought, famine, lack of potable drinking water, flooding, fires, extreme storms, and hurricanes. We are nowhere close to keeping warming to 2 degrees, even with the existing commitments of local and national governments. Some client scientists estimate that we are now looking at up to a 3 to 4 degrees war uh, Celsius warmer world, which could condemn us to an uninhabitable planet. As we witnessed this year, from the devastation caused by Hurricane Michael in Florence to the chaos of wildfires in California, climate change is already an emergency. The impacts are being felt most dramatically by frontline communities, low-income people, people of color, indigenous people, houseless communities, people with disabilities. These are all people who are least responsible for causing the climate crisis. It is undeniable that climate change is an urgent economic and racial justice crisis. It's up to all of us to work together to chart a path of just transition from an extractive, destructive, and racist economy toward equitable, regenerative, and local living economy that upholds human rights and the life support systems of the earth. I've got um, someone to see my time, Nicole Harris. Okay, one well, additional minute. Please, Nicole Harris. No, your name, sir, speaking. Nicole Colin. Harris, Colin, Colin Cookmiller, thank you. Go ahead. Ensuring the leadership of frontline and indigenous communities in this just transition is a practical necessity, not just an ideological or symbolic gesture. Key to a just transition is the city of Oakland working in partnership with community-based organizations, as you all are already doing in different uh, uh, situations like the East Oakland Neighborhoods Initiative, um, in partnership with groups to address the historic inequities of Oakland that have resulted from the legacy of redlining and disinvestment. Oakland's flatlands, Communities suffer from far greater rates of illness that result from an unhealthy and polluted environment. Flatlands, residents, especially African Americans, are facing unprecedented rates of displacement and homelessness, resulting in Oakland losing a quarter of our city's black population to the Outer East Bay, diminishing the diversity that makes our community special. The current scenario is eco-apartheid. We need eco-justice. Thank you for your leadership in passing this resolution today and recommending it to full city council. Uh, thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. My name is Michael Eisenscher. I'm a resident of Oakland for many years. I'm a delegate to the Labor Council and a member of its Climate Caucus. I'm speaking on my own behalf, not the Council at this time. I'm also a member of the Labor Network for Sustainability, a national labor environmental group. I want to associate myself with the uh, uh, position of the Oakland Climate Action Coalition, but I want to take exception to an omission from their statement that I want to uh, consider. And that is that any just transition policy must address the needs and interests of the workers who are going to be displaced by the necessary changes we're going to make in order to achieve a renewable uh, energy society. These are workers not just in oil and, and, and fossil fuel um, related jobs, but all kinds of work that is derivative of those. I also want to point out that the threat is not, the, the threat of the environmental changes that are taking place and will take place if we don't take action are going to have a profound impact on jobs generally. A three foot to five foot sea level rise, which is predicted by the end of the century, is going to literally wipe out the port, Jack London Square, uh, Brooklyn Basin, the airport. All of these low lying areas are going to be impacted. Now, people have said, well, we can build dikes, but the water has got to go somewhere. If it doesn't go there, it's going to go somewhere else. The city of Oakland is going to be profoundly in, impacted, and climate change is a job killer. Let's be clear about that. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. My name is Barbara Stebbins. I'm here with Local Clean Energy Alliance, one of the member organizations of the Open Climate Action Coalition, um, in support of the declaration of a climate emergency and the call for a just transition. I think the climate emergency has been made uh, blatantly obvious by the most recent IPCC report. But I think the need for a just transition is often minimized. A just transition is necessary in order to actually address the crisis. Climate change is actually only one symptom of a much bigger looming crisis based on an economy and a system that uh, exploits racism, that is extractive, that's exploitative, all of that needs to change. We could solve our GHG emissions tomorrow and we would still be looking at a problem in terms of continuation of the human species on this planet or even life on the planet. So that just transition to me should always come first because that's actually the only way we're going to solve the climate crisis. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. My name is Richard Rollins. I'm speaking today for the Energy and Climate Committee of the San Francisco Bay Chapter of the Sierra Club. I want to start by thanking Council Members Call and Kaplan, Mayor Sheff, and City Attorney Parker for their wisdom in recognizing the threat of climate change and also for their courage in declaring a state of climate emergency and calling for the city to act with appropriate action. Um, the Energy and Climate Committee of the Sierra Club supports immediate and urgent action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and work toward a zero net emissions uh, position as quickly as possible. We support a collaborative approach that involves community education and participation, inclusion of vulnerable and disadvantaged community members, and broad mobilization that results in rapid and just response to our climate emergency. We support this resolution and urge the Public Works Committee to approve it today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. My name is Janice Kirsch. I'm a physician also trained in public health and uh, occupational and environmental medicine. And the first thing I really want to do is thank you for, for this declaration, which I think will happen. I want to thank you for understanding that we are in an emergency situation, that climate disruption, I don't call it climate change because that sounds like something too normal, like menopause. But it's, <laughs> um, the climate disruption is quite simply the greatest public health threat that humankind has ever faced and probably ever will face. I am here today to say, though, we have a small window of opportunity. It's, I think, a bit exaggerated, that window, by the IPCC report, but I won't go into detail into that. A lot of people here will talk about the fact that this is an existential threat. We all already have. I want to get local. Here in Oakland, people are dying every day. We have a code blue, you know. The, the hospital operatives called out code, and you folks are answering it. And I thank you for being doctors of destiny. Because there are people from especially, I want to talk about the particulate matter, the fine particulates that are killing people. And you all know about that. I don't, I don't have to give a lecture here because you've all heard about it. But there's new data coming out. Not only do we have them causing PM 2.5 millions, a uh, few millions or even uh, fractions of a million, of a meter long, these particulates not only cause stroke, cause and exacerbate lung disease, cause or exacerbate heart disease, um, cause cancer, probably cause dementia. There's also, that's good new evidence on that, or bad new evidence. There's also evidence that, there is, that there's causation of type 2 diabetes, um, a, major, a major threat throughout California. There is also a, um, a terrible honor that we have, that the Bay, um, 
Thank you. The, the, the Bay Area. Right, did someone just see their time? Karen Harrington. Thank you. Thank you very much. One more minute, please. Yes. Um, I trained in New York. I'll go very quickly. Um, that it, it turns out that Alameda County and San Francisco, among other areas, we rank number six in PM 2.5 and lower. These are things that are obviously going to be more, um, are going to affect those who are in frontline communities first and worst. But, and there's some kind of a haunting environmental justice in this one. If you live in the Oakland Hills, because I've been out with my laser meter, you're not safe there either. PM 2.5 are widespread. So if we want to keep everybody's health, if, all, if one was so selfish that they only care about themselves, which I know no one hears that, is like that, no, there's no fallout shelter for the rich. But I want to thank you once again. I want to thank you from, for caring about people, for caring about human life, from my, not my anatomic, from my spiritual heart. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Next speaker, please. Hello, my, my name is Albert Kiefner. I'm with the Alameda Interfaith Climate Action Network and Western Service Workers Association in West Oakland. And I completely agree with the previous speaker about a particular matter. Uh, in Oakland, the uh, asthma rate is three times what it is anywhere else in the Bay Area. But that is not what gets people excited about climate justice. And forget climate warming. We say climate warming, people go south. When you mention just statistics, they go south. We heard a lot of statistics that are very relevant, but have no impact on people's motivation to do anything. And so what I'm suggesting is that we, in politics they say, follow the money. Okay? In climate justice, and also in faith matters, uh, follow the water. Follow the water. For example, in West Oakland, uh, at Western Service Workers Association, we have people streaming through our door every Tuesday and Thursday with their, their shutoff notice from EB Mud because it's the last bill they pay. It's only submitted every two months. And uh, people think they can get along without it, you know, maybe, maybe borrow from there. It doesn't work. In this state, it's actually a, a law, state law that passed in 2012, that everybody have access to safe affordable and accessible water. Is that happening in the homeless cabins? I don't think so. Okay? We had Western Service workers had to go to the EB Mud board last year seven times to get them to reduce the, uh, the uh, penalty for, for, for reconnecting water. Uh, it was at $1,000 for something they have a right to have by state law. Okay? So follow the water. Follow the water. That's the variable. You can measure that, and it affects people's lives. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, I'm Jack Fleck from 350 East Bay, and um, like the other speakers, I urge you to support this resolution. We're strongly in support of it. And um, I just wanted to call like, attention to a couple of the details in there. One is, and you've mentioned it a couple of times, that this is a resolution calling for a regional collaboration. And I really urge the city of Oakland to take a leadership role in pulling the rest of the Bay Area, now Berkeley, Richmond, some other cities have passed these resolutions. I'm sure San Francisco will. I think Oakland and San Francisco could be a great team. I ask you as council members to be on that leadership team and make sure that we have some kind of regional town hall and pull this together. The other point I want to make is that um, the, 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 the plan or the resolution says that we want to reduce citywide greenhouse gases emissions as quickly as possible. Okay, that's great. But it also points out that the city's goal is 83% reduction by 2050. Now, you know, the governor just signed an executive order saying that the state goal is 100% reduction by 2045. So at the very least, Oakland should get in step with the rest of the state. So I urge you to bring the state, the city's goal at least up to the state level. But I would retain that language as soon as possible because as other speakers have pointed out, we don't have much time. And um, just to say what we really need to do, we need to get everybody, and I agree with all the equity arguments, we need to get everybody out of fossil fuel vehicles. We need to make a transition to all, electrify everything in transportation. We need to make all the home heating electric. That's a huge task. We've got to do it. If we don't do it, we're still using fossil fuels. 
and it has to be done in an equitable way, and it all has to be done with 100% clean energy. So there's a lot of work to do. This is just a step. It's just a resolution, and it's well intended, and I urge you to make it happen. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello. Good morning. My name is Michelle Brown, and I'm here as a mom. And i looking at all of you, and I thank you so much for for being here and for declaring a state of emergency. Please vote yes. Please pass this resolution. This is not business as usual. We are we're facing something none of us have ever faced before, none of our religious teachings have prepared us for, nothing our education from our past, from nothing that I can even explain to my daughter about what her world will look like 20, 40, 60, 80 years from now. And I'm looking at all of you, you probably have parents and children, and I urge you to take this opportunity, take the leadership that these organizations are urging you to collaborate. I want to help. I want you. I want to be involved. I want to help the city. I will work. I can't think of anything more important than this. I wake up every day thinking about this. How could we do this? When my daughter is in her 20s or in her 30s, I'm going to say, she's going to say, what did you do? What did you do to prevent this? Well, I'm showing up today. I've never been to one of these things. Never. But I will come. I will keep showing up. And I have some privilege because I'm a stay-at-home mom right now, today, this year. And I know there's plenty of other parents that cannot be here because they are working. So I'm looking at you all. I don't even know all your names. I know Rebecca. Thank you. But I, I'm here. I'm showing up, I'm holding you accountable. Do not let greed and profit win. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, uh, my, my, my name is uh, B B Benjamin G G G G G Guterres, and, 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 I, and I, I'm, I'm a r r resident of uh, 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 so why why should 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 Oakland de de declare a an emergency? I think I think that 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 we as human beings are are very 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 good at. Uh, at 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 could coming together during 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 times of 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 crises, but like during 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 the 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 disasters or 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 attacks or things happen right here and right now whereas I think I think that 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 we have shown a a a a somewhat somewhat um poor ability to 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 Long, 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 long-term problems, and so I, I think, I think that 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 this resolution is 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 Engaging that 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 engaging that 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 best part of 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 human nature, 
which 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 caused us to 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 come 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 to come to 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 together and 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 solve our 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 shared shared problems. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. My name is Tom Smith. I'm with the First Unitarian Church of Oakland, just around the corner. Uh, we have a very strong interest in justice, particularly in West Oakland, our neighborhood. So we urge you to please uh, organize and join regional efforts to come to a just transition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Armando Davila. I'm with uh, Berkeley and Open Climate Action Coalition, 350 East Bay and the Climate Mobilization. Thank you so much for taking up this resolution and thank you for all the work on the illegal dumping issue. That was quite alarming to hear about. Uh, so a little bit of background context. The resolution, you know, one of the kind of underground elements of the resolution is the history of the World War II analogy. Um, in World War II, the United States of America, in order to fight the Nazis, facing this existential threat of fascism worldwide, totally repurposed the economy for the war effort. And so the idea of immediately initiating a city, regional, state, and federal, and global mobilization effort is to pick up on that heritage, on that, and to, instead of mobilizing in, a, in an unprecedented fashion to fight a war, we're mobilizing in an unprecedented Presidented fashion to restore the biosphere, to get our economy within planetary boundaries, to end injustice as business as usual, and uh, to do that as a world together would be profoundly liberating. It would be profoundly relieving. It would be profoundly inspiring. It would be profoundly appropriate. And so the idea of this resolution in Berkeley, in Richmond, and here in Oakland and in partnership with a coalition of folks down in LA who are pushing for a climate emergency mobilization department is to trigger that altruistic and survivalistic mass mobilization effort. Um, the just transition is at the heart of this, as was spoken to eloquently, and it really re will require your leadership. Um, it is the moral thing to do. 1.5 degrees Celsius warming is not a safe degree of warming. The IPCC report is constrained to produce on that timeline because that is what the United Nations produced with the bullying efforts of countries like our own who are highly dependent on fossil fuel industries. Capitalism as it currently stands is not a compatible economic system and so the depth of transition we're facing is intense but it is what we are capable of achieving. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker please. Any more speakers? All names have been called. Oh, I'm sorry, are you one of the speakers? We don't have a card. No card, okay. So you could still sign up for open forum as I yeah, that'll be you describe. Uh, that'll be open forum. Let, let's stick with the open forum afterwards as well. Uh, so all the speakers' names have been called and they've all spoken. Uh, colleagues, any more comments? Councilor Regan, then Councilor Cap. Thank you. I wanted to thank the coalition for bringing this forward. Um, certainly, regional action is necessary to combat this crisis that we have before us. Uh, I'd be interested in trying to uh, work with the coalition to figure out how we can bring this maybe through other regional governing bodies like ABAG. Uh, ABAG needs to have this on their agenda. Uh, we're mostly concerned with planning, but certainly resilience and, and dealing with the crisis is something that needs to be taken on as, as, as a region as well. Um, and um, I want to thank uh, Councilmember Davila who contacted me about this issue some time ago. I'm glad that it, from Berkeley, from the city of Berkeley, I'm glad that it's come forward and that uh, we're moving on that. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Councilor Kaplan. Uh, yes, thank you all so much for coming, for helping to fight for this, not only in Oakland, uh, but much more broadly. Um, I, I am happy to move this item, and, and I do want to comment that when we talk about uh, including the most impacted communities, that uh, I want to make clear on the record that I absolutely intend that to include planning for a just transition for the jobs. It were also, it, it also talks about the workers, and it also mentions on page two, uh, labor as one of the organizations. So I wanted to make sure to highlight that. When we talk about a just transition, that means just environmentally, but it also means economically, and in terms of jobs for displaced workers. So that absolutely is part of our intention uh, in this item, and I wanted to make sure that doesn't get missed. Um, 
also, I just wanted to support some of the public comments that were made. Um, Oakland suffers some of the worst air pollution in the nation. And Oakland, for 25 years, did not even have a seat on the regional board that makes decisions about air quality while suffering the worst air pollution in the region. And so when we talk about the global impact and how does that interrelate to social justice, it is Oakland youth suffering from asthma and Oakland people suffering from cancer and all the negative effects of PM 2.5 and all of uh, the problems that that causes at the local level. And so we absolutely do need to fight for this throughout our region, uh, including to get Oakland a seat back on the air board, um, as well as making sure that ABAG uh, does the work that they were recently authorized to do by ballot measure around sea level rise. There is now Bay Area regional funding for dealing with waterways and sea level rise. And so that'll be another opportunity. And so I hope we'll be looking at serious things like the trucks, which are one of the heaviest sources of the toxic emissions uh, in our city, uh, as well as everything else we need to do as we bring back the Climate Action Plan, which is where we detail the specific steps on the local level uh, that those will need to be strengthened, including the new goal of 100% by 2045 or sooner. Um, also, that we're going to need to plant bioswales and fruit trees uh, as well. So there's a lot of tangible actions to be taken to make this real, but this is a really important step in that direction, and I move the item. Second. Thanks for moving and seconded. Uh, just a, a couple uh, more comments. Uh, I, as uh, Councilor Kaplan and some of the speakers were alluding to, uh, the benefit, one of the benefits of taking serious action uh, to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions uh, some of those um, actions and policies and mechanisms and requirements and incentives that uh, lead to reductions in greenhouse gases also lead to reductions in uh, other uh, criteria or pollutants and toxic or contaminants that, ha that have a more immediate impact, a more immediate um, uh, health impact on people. And so these are often called for better or worse, co-benefits or additional air quality benefits. Mm -hmm. And so those will be uh, the set of policies that we look forward to, and we, and we have to some extent already, but we look forward to in our new, more robust um, climate action plan. Uh, we'll take that into account as uh, in terms of prioritizing those policies. Of course, there will, there will be other policies that are just broadly greenhouse gases, and those will also be very important. But uh, we have a lot to do, and um, I'm looking forward to, to digging into this. And uh, again, a reminder to all council members today, you need to get into your, your rec if you haven't already, get your recommendations to the mayor for up to three people to be uh, possibly serve on the advisory committee for this climate action plan process. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, that's unanimous. That can go on the consent calendar in the next council meeting. Third. Third, yeah. And now anything with open forum. Open forum. We have four speakers. Approach the podium in any order for open forum. We have Rochelle Torres, Etta Johnson, Carolyn Burgess, and Nicholas Vigilante in any order, please. Welcome. Hi, thank you. I'm Rochelle. Thank you so much for uh, sending this very important resolution to the whole council. Uh, I have five grandchildren. I uh, fear for the world that they will inhabit. Uh, and I hope that this resolution will help us with the threats that are coming, that we're facing, because many of you know that um, there is a lot of um, action to try and bring more uh, fracked oil through our bay to the Phillips refinery, through Alberta, Canada, down through um, indigenous land, and down the coast and into our bay and then up to San Pablo Bay. That would increase the number of oil freighters who are coming with fracked oil, which very little of which now comes into our bay about four times. The number of emissions that would come out of the Phillips plant would be astronomically increased, and this will impact every community on the bay. And so I'm very glad that, that cities are taking these kinds of actions because we'll need to really unite and fortify ourselves against this drive to extract every single last drop of oil uh, before um, they can lose one dollar uh, of profit. And we are facing this. Rodeo is number is in the top one percent of low birth weights in the state of California. 
and um, we will face the same kinds of things. Um, the air pollution will be greatly increased, and the danger to the water, we know that it won't be a question of when, it will be, you know, we know it will happen, that there will be some sort of explosion, some sort of problem that will have a catastrophic effect on our air and our water if that goes through. So thank you for this resolution. Thank you very much.